Welcome back to a very British space program. In this episode, we are going to be doing a number of different sort of missions. The first one we're going to look at is a film canister return mission. It says to space, but actually it's it's just past the Kerman line and back again. So uh, please join us. So we have a mission to get ourselves a uh, film canister, send it up past the Kerman line, uh, travel a bit sideways, and then recover it. So this is, you know, this is going to be a, a bit of an interesting one. We've done a few recoveries before, but this is a big payload, and so yeah, we have to we have to think about what we're doing here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to bring back a nose cone. Is what the idea I've got now. Unfortunately, the camera is absolutely huge compared to our rocket. Um, and you can see I'm trying to sort the nose cone situation. Now, I could have put a fairy around the whole thing, but I just can't bring myself to put a fairy that makes it even wider. I could have also made a wider rocket, but it just it was sh far too short and stupid size. So we're actually using the, the, the core of the Red Princess 3A, which you have not seen yet, which is also technically the, the Red Prince 3. But anyway, the naming's, yeah. Um, we put a parachute on it, we've got a decoupler underneath. That big white bit at the bottom is the avionics unit. We've rescaled that and I'm hoping there's multiple of these missions because um, this actually cost a bit of money to tool because you know I always think it, for something like this I think there's going to be more missions like this. We're going to call it the red eye because it's going to see all and know all. Now we're also going to strap onto the side some big fins. We're going to try and pull that center of, of lift right back because I am concerned with that big bulbous head. It's going to fall over. It looks like a lawn down now, though. Um, so this is hopefully going to bring this back. This is the on, not the only craft that actually has got big, stupid-looking wings on it. If you actually go back in history, you'll see things like Little Joe, Big Joe. Um, even the design concept for Dinosaur on the Titan II missile had these had big wings to try and do something similar to this. So we're going to just check our engine situation, make sure they're all set up, and uh, we're going to get going. However, while that's building, we're going to do another mission. So we're going to do a uh, uh, an X planes high contract. Uh, we're going to try and get to 40 uh, 40 kilometers up. Um, it, it's 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 119 days since our last one. So if I let it go any longer, you know, we get more money, but it's longer until the next one. So let's just get on with it, shall we? So we're going to be flying the Farley, uh, sorry, the White Arrow to be the Farley. Um, and we have Carol Freeman in the pilot seat and she's going up there. Um, after this flight, we are actually going to upgrade the engines on this. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, shall we say, pocketed for a while. Um, we are sort of uh, mid-1954 at the moment, um, moving on through. Um, so, so the text there, we've got we've got the Gamma 103 or 301 engines available. We also have extra capacity in this craft. However, that's going to be limited by the actual payload we can put into air launch. So um, as soon as that tech expands, then we will be able to put a larger, a, a heavier craft up there and we'll be able to push ourselves. However, the, the actual fuel that we've got on board, we've still got, you know, a big chunk of fuel available for us to burn. Um, and in all in all honesty, we could probably take this craft, even with its current loadings, to close to its maximum limit. Remember, we're looking at 75 kilometers with this cockpit is the maximum it can ever go. And you can see now on re-entry, we are actually starting to um, to get heat build up. So this craft is um, it is pushing its own limits right now. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the evolutionary history of the future of this craft is, whether we uh, we adapt it, we change the cockpit for maybe the, the X-15 style cockpit. I'm not entirely sure. What we can see is that Carol Freeman is loving it. She's loving being in that, in that, that craft. Now, this is the moment, of course, where Carol is famous for ripping wings off. And it wasn't my fault at all. It was hers. You'll see I'm tapping the controls delicately right now, very delicately. Still not using fine controls because, yeah, I like to live dangerously. Um, so yeah, so she's going to come in for a nice landing and Carol is an expert at this when she's got wings on a plane She seems to be quite capable of landing it on all wheels. I'm going to say all four wheels on all three wheels um, But yeah, so we come down over 225 meters per second at touchdown I think it's a little bit excessive, but she slows down reasonably quickly on the Australian flats um, Avoiding the kangaroos and koalas and stuff. In fact, she probably gets out and she's probably going to grab a, a koala because we do need a biological sample for later, but we, we'll, we'll talk about that later. So, mission complete. On to the next one. 
So here we are, Red Eye One Air is launching. It does look like such a, a lawn dart, particularly as it launches from a nice green launch pad there. Um, now the important thing to remember about this is we do not need to go into uh, a proper suborbital flight. We're looking to go over 100 kilometers up, but we're also looking to go downrange a bit as well. We have to get a downrange distance of 200 kilometers. And I think that's really quite clever actually. It's a nice little push for you to actually force you to be at that height for some time. You can't just tip it and go sort of thing. You have to be flying uh, sideways a bit. And it adds a bit more difficulty to it. If we were just going to aim for 100 kilometers with this, it would go up, we'd put a parachute on it, come straight down, and I would I would probably set the whole thing back down. But the speed required to get us to go sideways as well and hit that target with a start off at the bottom there becomes a little bit interesting. We could put retro rockets on this and all sorts and over-engineer it, but in reality, um, oh, we've got an engine out. We lose an engine. Luckily, these engines are reasonably good at gimbling, and I think it was actually the middle engine that went anywhere, so that was uh, that was okay. Um, in reality, we're actually becoming more aware of the difficulties associated with potentially re-entry, which we're going to have to start addressing in the future because we're going to have to start preparing to bring things back from space once we actually get into space permanently, because at the moment, we're just doing hops and as these hops get higher or faster um, we're gonna have to develop technologies to really work on that so you can see we get it well above our target well over the 100 kilometer range that we need to get and we get the down range reasonably easily because we're going at quite a good speed we're going over what two and two two thousand four hundred meters per second at peak so we've got a decent orbital speed going on there um which i should have noted for the next mission but we'll again you'll see why i should have noted that so we detach our, our nose cone and we're just going to let it flip around. Now, luckily, the avionics, because we put it at the bottom there, is the heavy part of this. So it's going to tend downwards and we're going to use that basically to aero brake. Um, it's flat bottom, really nice design, pretty much like the, the cone designs of re-entry capsules you find with, with Mercury and Apollo and Gemini and so forth. You've got that blunt body re-entry. Um, You'll notice they never have a tip on the top of them and because it would potentially there's some if you read some of the aerodynamics books it's quite interesting about the fact that they have that that, that flat top as well so it doesn't doesn't drift across sideways and all sorts of interesting little things so there we are we're going down um it also is about center of mass you want to keep that center of mass nice and low with the heavy heat shield so our avionics is basically acting like a heat shield with a decoupler on the bottom as well just for either thing um, I could have got away without the decoupler, in fact. Um, in my head, the decoupler was an extra thing that could burn off if we needed to because of, of heat or whatnot. We come through the atmosphere, and it's a really nice actual return. And with a little bit of refining, maybe a lengthening of the first stage, we could actually we could actually fire this into orbit and bring it back. Um, the difficulty would be the downrange distance. So parachute's open. It comes in and uh, yeah it's just a nice gentle gentle fall down to earth which i think is a really nice um it's our first sort of <clears throat> what i would say a real sort of semi suborb well suborbital it's it's a stepping stone but it's it's a nice realistic sort of flight so the next mission um we've had the red eye where we take a camera up now we're going to have uh, a mission where we're going to take some biological samples up. We've taken fruit flies, things like that up before. Um, now we're going to take up a, an advanced biological capsule and we're going to take it up. But importantly, we're going to get it up to 2000 meters per second. So we're going to take our red prints again and um, we're going to just, you know, first of all, we're going to check what uh, what experiments we can put in it, take some off, don't want extra stuff. Um, we're going to take the... Uh, the top sort of node that we've been using for our craft stick ourselves an advanced biological sample on the top and um that's pretty much it done yeah you, you, well we need parachutes obviously you know apart from that we check one thing to remember always check if you're using an old craft always check the engines the good things for this is i don't actually have to tool that craft at all it's pretty much done for me so i can i can basically just you know refine it um we're going to stick a decoupler on because I don't want a whole thing to come back down because it will mean my parachutes are really heavy or big. And if they're really heavy or big, they're more likely to get hit by hot air and explode. So we're going to call this the red frog because it's going to pop up and down. That does not mean I have put a frog in the um, in the biological sample. In actual fact, I would imagine that the 
biological sample is actually a koala, the koala that Carol Freeman actually got when she landed. Um, because being being British, um, we wouldn't want to take cats or dogs because, well, we, we are a dog-loving nation. I, I'm going to be honest, I'm not, but anyway, yeah. And uh, cats are re often considered cute, particularly by YouTubers, not me. Um, but uh, so that leaves us with, you know, what, what rabbits? Rabbits are just, you can't put a rabbit on a rocket. That's, that's just cruel. They're, they're too cute. So koalas, because the, the British obviously are horrible people um, and have decided this empire should uh, send a koala into space. Um, if anybody ever thinks koalas are purely lovely, do some reading up on some of the illnesses they carry because it's quite quite interesting. Also, interesting little fact about koalas, don't know why I'm talking about it. Koalas have fingerprints. Did you know that? Mm. So, you know, if, if, you, if you burgled sometimes, it might be human, might be koala. One of only two organisms to have fingerprints, the other being humans. Anyway, so we put the launch collapse on and everything. Um, and I actually... <laughs> I actually sort of went to build it and then realized, you know what, let's just be careful. We're going to go 2,000 meters. We're going to try and go to 2,000 meters per second sideways. I am concerned about, number one, stability, because um, as you saw in the last one, I was thinking uh, decoupler, use the decoupler, burn off, wonderful. Um, let's put some fins on it. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I decided to put four fins on it. Looking back, I would probably recommend two fins at an angle. To, to act almost like air brakes. Um, I basically saw this as just stability control more than anything else. Um, important thing to remember also, these fins are made up of um, supersonic wings. They are only rated to, I believe, uh, I think it's Mach 3. I think I'd have to read the literature, but I think they're only rated to about Mach 3. So you're looking at maybe 900 meters per second. I'm not gonna be going at 900. I'm gonna be going quite a lot more than that. Um, definitely over the rated speed. Now, yes, we are going to be higher up in the atmosphere, so there's a playoff regarding that, but we have to take that into account. So potentially, if they get into the stream of air too much, they could um, explode, blow up, fall off, or hopefully not kill our koala. Obviously, they currently in Kerbal are cutting straight through the koala in four places, but that's not realistic because we'd have cut the hole where the koala's going. So don't worry too much about the koala being in quarters. Although I'm not entirely sure it'd be a good koala after this anyway. So let's just launch it, shall we? Enough of koala talk. So engines are going. It is a night launch because we just wanted to get it over and done with. You can see we start tilting over straight away because we have to get that horizontal speed. Um, yes, we have to get suborbital, so 140 meters up. But the concern for me was actually the, the suborbital speed. You can see we've got over 4,000 meters per second of delta V. Oh, but the thrust on these engines at the start means I am going to lose a lot of that to uh, to drag lower down. Now, once we're out of the, the thick soup, as it were, you can still see we've got loads and loads of delta V left. So we're not even past the 2000 mark and I'm I'm pretty much at the altitude I need. So I'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to do this. In fact, I could probably go faster. I wouldn't be surprised if this craft could get to 3000. Um, that final little push there, you can see that we are surface speed of well over 2000 and uh, I had been looking at surface speed not orbital speed at this point orbital speed had us over at that point two and a half thousand kilometers uh, there's two and a half thousand meters per second two and a half thousand kilometers that could be crazy talk um I'm a little nervous shall we say at this re-entry profile um if I get through the re re the the heating phase um re-entry point I'll be fine the parachutes they'll be fine as long as they survive it is, however, a concern because I don't really want roasted koala. Um, important to remember, um, I think fruit flies were flown in the 1940s by the Americans on their V2, their captured V2s. But um, a lot of a lot of uh, pets and animal pets, not pets, but animals have actually been flown before man. Famously, the the Mercury capsule had a monkey put in, a chimp put into it before they put in the astronauts. And if they'd have actually put an astronaut in, they might actually have beaten uh, the Russians to first man the space. So, you know, sometimes uh, animals don't don't get the praise they should be expecting. They should be really getting. So. We're going to come back through the atmosphere. Um, the koala obviously has no control of what's going on right now. And at this point, I start to worry because we're going koala first. Um, luckily, as the lights shine on the Australian outback when the koala is being returned to its homeland, obviously, um, it starts to look as though it's going to stabilize itself. 
Um, one point I would say if you're doing this, uh, put it on normal speed at this point. I was going fast and I actually think you get an, ex an exaggerated wobble. Um, so while this is coming in though, I think our next step is gonna have to be looking at orbit because we're doing all this return stuff, but we have yet get to get to orbit. So I think we need to focus on that. You can see we get through the heating really stably. Actually, I was really surprised. Um, and I'm not gonna make you watch the parachute opening because well, it takes forever because this was a bad parachute design, but uh, until next time, have a great one.